Hey team, in this video, we're going to be seeing how to create a new labeling project from scratch. As part of this process, we're also going to be seeing how to import data records into the labeling project and configure the ontology or labeling instructions for the labeling team. The first step is to click on new project in the top right hand corner. Once we click on that, we have a variety of different options we can choose from when it comes to working with the unstructured data modality. For the purposes of this walkthrough, we'll be working with video. So let's click on that option. The next step is to create a name for the labeling project. You can go ahead and name this as video annotation project. Let's hit save. And now we'll see the page where we can add data to our labeling project. So let's click on add data. Now from here, there's two possible options. We can either send a subset of the videos that we want to get labeled. And the way we do that is by clicking on the select all button and then hitting sample. Now with sample, we have two different sampling techniques we can choose from. We can do an ordered sampling based approach or a random sampling based approach. We can then choose a subset of how many videos we want to send to the labeling project. So in the case of 1,000, maybe we want to send 500 or 20 or 10. Uh, depending on what's appropriate, we can go ahead and configure that over here. We can then pair this with the data row priority. So now what this is saying is maybe there are some batches that we want to get labeled first. So we would set the priority to be one. And this will allow us to then curate these batches based on the degree of importance. So that's the case where we want to send a subset of data records to a labeling project. We can also queue the entire data set, in which case we would click on queue batch. And assuming all the videos have the same priority, we can click on number one and hit submit batch. So now we've gone ahead and added data to the project. The next step is to set up the ontology. Let's begin the ontology creation process. To do so, we'll first click on the setup button. We'll be using the standard video editor and we'll be creating a new ontology. We can name this as video editing ontology. We're then taken to a page where we'll be configuring our ontology. We can make object based annotations or classification based annotations across our videos. Object based annotations could entail tracking key assets or points of interest across our different videos. Suppose we want to track a person. We have a variety of different tools we can use to track the person with, whether that's a bounding box, a segmentation tool, the polyline tool, or the point tool. On top of objects, we can make classifications. Suppose we want to track whether a character's lip movements are synchronized with the speech in the video. We can name that as our classification and we can choose which amongst the tools best fits that task. In this case, it probably makes the most sense to use the radio tool and confine the options to be either yes or no. On top of this, we can configure whether or not this classification should be required or not required and whether or not we want to apply this on a per frame basis or a global basis. Per frame basis means that we would be answering this annotation for each and every frame within the video. Global basis would mean we'd be answering the classification just once for the entire video itself. Finally, we can choose whether or not we want to make this a drop down or not a drop down. The case for not making it a drop down is evident when you have fewer options to work with. This is because we can utilize the hotkeys within the labeling editor to make the process of labeling a lot quicker. As you can see, we can simply toggle between J and K fairly quickly. We can also see the delineation between global classifications and frame based tools. Let's hit done and look at how we can make per frame annotations. Suppose we want to identify what part of the video a particular frame is in. We can name this as our classification. We'll continue to use the radio option and our options can be scene one, scene two, or break. 
we'll use the per frame annotation as we'd like, and we'll hit done. So that's how we configure a per frame annotation. Maybe we'd like to also have a way to use a text-based annotation. So suppose we'd like to summarize what happens in this video. We can go ahead and configure that and notice we'll now see this little text editor that pops up. And this would allow the labeler to go ahead and summarize what happens in the video. So that's the second option. And the final option is to identify and use the checklist tool. So let's say we want to identify the characters that appear in this video. Once again, we can do this on a per frame basis or a global basis. And let's say our options are Bob, Joe, and Sally. So we'll go ahead and click the check and we'll be able to go ahead and see what the process looks like if we want to identify the characters. We are able to see that it's Bob and Joe and Sally. So that's the case where we can, where we've investigated how we can make the different annotations, whether that's objects or classifications to our ontology. From here, we can also attach a PDF of the specific labeling instructions we would like for the labelers to see as they're going about doing their task. This is fairly important and typical that we see our customers attach some sort of instruction that will allow them, the labelers, to go ahead and complete the task. And finally, we can use the ontology JSON that gets configured automatically as you're constructing your ontology. This is helpful if you want to be able to use this ontology as a JSON in your SDK.